we have to begin by asking, what's a day? I mean, obviously it's just the time it takes the Earth to turn around once, right? But according to what? Everything else in space is moving in some way, too. The universe doesn't include a convenient sheet of graph paper at absolute rest we can trace paths on. The best we can do on that front is to look at very, very far, far, far away stars. So far away, like distant features of the landscape out the window of a moving car, they barely move as Earth does. Now, to them, a meridian on Earth completes a trip around about once every 23.9 hours. This is called a sidereal day. Sidereal means pertaining to the stars. Even though the sidereal day seems pretty clear, it's not what our calendars and clocks are based on, because there's a nearer star whose position relative to us has a bigger effect on our lives. The Sun. Looking down on the North Pole at Earth's counterclockwise spin, the Earth also moves counterclockwise around the Sun. After a sidereal day, the Earth has moved a bit along its orbit, so some more rotation is required for the same meridian to point back towards the Sun again. This longer definition of one rotation is what the modern calendar and clock is based on. It is called the solar day. In astrology, the sidereal system was integrated because the stars and constellations were appearing in the background during a certain season accurately for a very, very long period of time. Just because we filed data and attributions to the period about that personality type or historical event doesn't mean that the distant object had anything to do with the occurrences. If the equator faced the Sun all the time and the Earth always orbited at the same speed, the subsolar point would just stay right there on the equator throughout the year and the amount of extra time spent rotating the Earth needed to do to finish a solar day would always be the same. But those two things aren't the case. First of all, the Earth's orbit is slightly elliptical, so its speed varies throughout the year. When it's moving around the Sun faster, around the beginning of January, the amount of extra turning time needed to complete the solar day is longer than when it's further away from the Sun and moving more slowly. There's more. The distance, angle, and side of the Sun that the Earth is facing changes its relationship with the Earth by providing it with a different energetic signature. The Earth is hit with a different spectrum and concentration of solar energy at these different points. The mixture of the concentration amounts and the varied spectrum waves creates a force that can be thought of as a cymatic, rhythmic music that tunes the soul and essence of all nature on Earth. This energy force is also coupled with the reverberation energy that reflects and radiates back off of the moon and all the other planets. Because the Earth is tilted, the subsolar point is dragged throughout the year in a circle around Earth that's not the equator, so it changes direction, moving northeast, then leveling out and going southeast, before leveling out and going northeast again. During times of the year when the subsolar point is being dragged by Earth's orbit mostly east, it gains against Earth's spin faster. More time is required for the day to finish. Now, by coincidence, we are alive at a time when both of these phenomena lengthen and shorten days at roughly the same time. So they add up, making September 18th almost a minute shorter than the longest day of the year, December 22nd. For Northern Hemispherians, December has the shortest periods of daylight, but the whole solar day, from sunrise to sunrise, is for everyone on Earth the longest of the year on December 22nd. People in the North just spend most of it in darkness. Earth's tilt it doesn't just affect how long a day is, it also affects how long a year is. This is because the Earth's tilt is what causes the seasons. For the half of the Earth tilted towards the Sun, the same amount of solar radiation is spread across less space than it is on the other half, 
so there's more heat energy laid down per area. This causes what we call summer and winter for the other half. The amount of time from one of these seasonal orientations of the Earth to its occurrence again is called a solar year, or a tropical year. It's a very useful way to define a year because it contains every single season exactly, since it's based on the very orientations that cause them. The background constellations have moved, but what makes us, us, had nothing to do with them in the first place. They were only associated for tracking reasons. Such a distant influence is so minute that it is barely worth even considering. 